Barbara. I'm a PhD student in biological and environmental engineering here at Cornell. And I'm doing research on conductive cooling for heat stressed dairy cattle. So I will be talking about looking at how different bedding thicknesses affect the heat flux and the condensation rate in a conductive cooling system. So heat stress leads to higher body temperatures, higher respiration rates, and lower milk production in dairy cattle. The lower milk production is especially a concern since this is the bottom line for dairy farmers. Conductive cooling is a novel cooling technology that's, that relies on letting the cow lie down on a cooled surface and allowing this to cool her. Um, it is an emerging technology that hasn't actually been implemented on farms, um, but we are one of a few labs around the country doing research on this. In the conductive cooling system, a heat exchanger is used in the stall and in some systems, uh, though either pipes are put into concrete or a flat plate heat exchanger is used and then a, a thick layer of bedding is put on top to cushion the cow and to protect the heat exchanger. Um, however, in our, our system that we tested, we got good results when we used a water bed as the heat exchanger and had only a thin layer, about a quarter inch of bedding on top of the water bed. This allowed the cow to be in almost direct contact with the heat exchanger. And we appeared to get considerably better results than other systems that use thick bedding. We believe this is because of greater heat transfer when the cow is in closer contact with the heat exchanger. In order to test this, we wanted to look at the heat flux for different types and thickness of the bedding and see how it changed when we added thick bedding to the system that we used successfully with thin bedding to cool cows. So the first objective was to determine the heat flux from a simulated cow to the conductive cooling system. We use simulated cows because when we use live cows, they damage the instrumentation and it was difficult to control precisely the amount of bedding that was in place. So in order to have a better controlled experiment, we used a sandbag and a heating pad to simulate the cow, which I'll talk about in a minute. To, the second objective was to compare the heat flux for sand and sawdust bedding material at different thicknesses. So we used one quarter inch, one inch, three inches, and eight inches to give a sampling of the potential bedding thicknesses that could be used. And our third objective was to determine if condensation occurs within the bedding and if so, if this is at a rate that would be of concern to dairy farmers using conductive cooling. The justification for conductive cooling systems is that current systems for relieving heat stress use combinations of convective and evaporative cooling. In high heat stress, especially with high humidity, simply putting a fan on the cow is not enough to keep her comfortable. Uh, but when there's high humidity, it makes evaporative cooling less effective. Um, there is a fairly expensive system called Corral Cool, which does use a combination of fans and evaporative cooling and does work well and can work well even in high humidity. Um, but we're looking at conductive cooling as an alternative to Corral Cool um, or to misters and sprinklers, especially for use with high humidity where the more traditional evaporative cooling systems don't work as well. Um, sprinkler systems also consume water, which in many cases is a scarce resource. The sprinkler systems can vary from 3,600 to almost 16,000 liters per cow per year, assuming a 120-day cooling season and 10 hours per day of cooling. Uh, moisture from sprinklers may increase, increase the risk of disease such as mastitis with the cows. And um, effectiveness of the conductive cooling systems, though, will depend on the thickness of the bedding. The, and we also wanted to do this experiment to look at the possibility of accumulating moisture from conductive cooling, which could have the same negative effects of moisture from sprinklers. So the system design used chilled water that was pumped through water-filled mats as a working fluid to cool the cows lying on the mats. And this system was originally tested with live cows a year before and gave good results when used with thin bedding. So we set up the same system, except this time we simulated a cow with a sandbag on top of a heating pad and a flux meter underneath. Then the bedding was varied from a quarter inch to eight inches, and we looked at how the flux changed as well as the surface temperatures of the rubber mat and how that changed. The heating pad was thermostatically controlled and set to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the sandbags 
um, simulated the weight of the cow and kept everything compressed. The pressure in the bed was reduced from what it was with the live cow so that when we put the sandbag down, it caused an indention just like it does when a live cow laid on the waterbed. So the heat flux and condensation rate were measured with sand and sawdust bedding at thicknesses of the one quarter inch, one inch, three inches, and eight inches. The heat flux was measured every two minutes for two hours for each of these eight treatments, i.e. both sand and sawdust at the four thicknesses. And in every case, the system was given one or more hours to equilibrate before the actual data was taken. So for the thin bedding treatment in one hour, the temperature seemed to have equilibrated, but for the thicker bedding, it was usually given at least two or three hours. We realized that in a production environment, if a cow gets up and another one doesn't lay down, the, heat, the bedding could be storing, uh, well, it, because of the heat capacity of the bedding, it could be cool and it could help cool the cow when she initially lays down. But we were interested in looking at the steady state heat flux, so, which is why we left the sandbags in place for two to three hours. This is longer than a cow would lay down, but in a heavily stocked dairy, as soon as one cow gets up, another one may lay down. And this will, so the steady state heat flux that the cow will benefit from will be comparable to what we saw. Now the moisture content of the bedding with the heating pads and sandbags removed was also determined by dehydrating samples. Again, the system was allowed to reach equilibrium and samples were taken in three locations and um, both at the onset and then again two hours later. So all the, the table here shows all the parameters that we measured, so heat flux and the mat surface temperature were recorded every two minutes. The inlet and outlet water temperature and flow rate were recorded every two minutes. This allowed us to uh, precisely measure what that water temperature was that corresponded to the other measurements. The bedding temperature profile for thicknesses greater than one inch was also measured every two minutes. And then for the condensation rate study, the moisture content of the bedding at 60 and 80 percent relative humidity on the top surface was measured for all eight bedding treatments. And also for the um, one inch thick bedding, the top, was the top of the bedding was removed and the bottom quarter inch was sampled to see if there was moisture accumulating on the bed surface. Um, so the results show that the, that the thick bedding dramatically cuts heat flux. In table two here, it shows the heat flux for cooled and not cooled um, at, for all four combinations of sand sawdust at the different thicknesses. In this case, the room temperature was uh, about 70 degrees, so it was not quite as hot as if it were a heat stress situation, which is why there was still some heat flow even when it wasn't cooled because the water was not up to body temperature. However, in a production environment with heat stress, these not cooled temperatures would be essentially, um, what should not have much heat flow as the water would equilibrate at approximately body temperature. So uh, what's important is the difference between the cooled and the not cooled. Um, and at the beginning with the 0.25 inches, there's more difference. And then once the bedding is increased to eight or three inches for the sand, that difference declines to about 50 watts per meter squared. And for sawdust, there's no detectable difference between the cooled and the not cooled. The stars show the differences that were the treatments that were statistically significantly different from the respective controls. So for sand, there was detectable heat flow for every treatment, uh, but for sawdust, once the bedding was three inches or eight inches thick, there was no difference between the heat flux for the cooled versus the not cooled beds, uh, which suggests that if a conductive cooling system is installed and covered with eight inches of sawdust or other organic materials, it won't really benefit the cows because not enough heat will be able to flow to the heat exchanger. Conductive cooling uh, with sand at any thickness or with sawdust at one inch or less had a statistically significant increase in the heat flux for the cooled versus uncooled beds, however. Finally, we looked at the condensation rate. This shows the thickness of the sand. Um, the first one is the quarter inch thick sand and the second one is one inch of sand, but simply looking at the bed surface. For one inch, three inches, or eight inches on the top, there was not even any trend towards moisture accumulating. Uh, however, for the one quarter inch sand, moisture accumulated at the rate of about 2% dry basis per hour, which meant that after four or five hours, the sand was completely saturated. 
However, for the one inch bed surface, the moisture accumulation was quite slow and it was not significant after two hours. If it was allowed to go for several hours, then it was a detectable increase in the moisture content right at the bed surface. However, it didn't seem to be fast enough to actually be a problem for dairy producers because there are many other sources of moisture, um, including the cow's sweat or leaking milk um, or the cow's waste. So the rate of accumulation of moisture due to co the conductive cooling was quite low because the bedding was blocking good airflow from reaching the surface and condensing the moisture out of the air. However, for the thinner bedding treatment, such as what we used in, with the live cast study that we did, farmers would have to control for moisture content. Um, so a lot of farmers who either use recycled sand or dried manure are already incorporating antibacterials in the bedding and we would recommend that anyone who wants to use conductive cooling with the thinner bedding treatment would also do this because they will need to recognize that the sand or other bedding will accumulate moisture so they would have to be prepared to um, deal with having moisture bedding for the cows if they were using conductive cooling with the thin amounts of bedding and with the 60 or 80 percent humidity such as what we tested in this study. The research was funded uh, by NYSERDA, the NSF, and USDA Hatch.